Welcome to Heartland Makes and Outdoors. If you guys have not been following along, we do have an Instagram account that automatically posts over to our Facebook. This is a lure, and I posted this on Instagram, and I was like, hey, I actually posted two of them. This one's going to be the pink, white, and black one, and then I also posted a black, white, and red one. And I asked for your vote. Which one would you fish with and why? We had several votes. Guys, if you enjoy playing along with stuff like that, you just never know. We may pick the lure that you chose for us, and we're going to go out and catch fish with it. Oh, fish on. Fish on, guys. We got another one. Oh, it's a good one. This is a good one, guys. This is a good one. Oh, man. As you've seen, we just pulled in a really nice bass using this jig in our 10 cast challenge that we do after we get done tying up our flies let's head back to the shop i'll show you how we tied this fly up and then we'll come back out here and finish up with our 10 cast doing some fishing real quickly guys i'm going to go over what we're going to be using in this video and to make this as quick as possible we're going to be using the ultra 210 red thread we're going to be using a 16th ounce black jig head we're going to be using the pink marabou some red flash as well as a white hackle feather so let's get to the video all right guys for those of you that want to learn how to tie this we're going to make this video as quickly as possible for those of you who do not care you can actually skip ahead and go straight on to us fishing so to start out we're going to do like we always do we're going to put a little bit of sally hansen's and if you guys can't tell, this jig head was actually made for like soft plastics, the little tiny worms or whatever. All right, we're going to be using the red thread. We're going to get our base layer on. If you guys want to smash that little tip down, now would be a good time to do that with a pair of We'll do that just to make it look a little smoother when we're done. Just smash that, get rid of that extra little bump that would hold, ordinarily hold the rubber on or the plastic on. All right, next up, I'm gonna grab us just a handful of the Marabou. This is a small jig. It is the 1 16th ounce. So you can actually use some of the little smaller pieces of the Marabou that you've kind of been putting to the side because they won't work for your bigger jigs. Cut this off here. Kind of clean that up just a little bit. All right. Next thing we're going to need, and I forgot to show you this at the beginning, guys, but we're going to use just a tiny piece of this white yarn. Again, this is the white yarn, and it is not cotton. It's some sort of acrylic or acrylic blend. We'll put the white on next. Just kind of wrap that. Just get it on there. Let me go back down here because I want it right there at the edge of those feathers. Put this on. Next up, we're going to get our flash. And you could do that in either order. It doesn't really matter. But all I'm doing is taking this one piece of flash, folding it over cutting it in half that way we got a little bit of flash on both sides we kind of want that about the same length as our marabou hold that on there flip that over yep that'll work Okay, so after we get the yarn tied in, we've got our thread. We just kind of ran it back up to the front to kind of smooth this out a little bit. We're going to run back down one more time, being careful not to keep hitting our thread on the hook. We're going to grab our white feather, and we're just going to kind of pull it down. Right now it looks real pretty. 
we're just going to kind of spread it out like that. And guys, there's a trick to this. Getting it laid in here to where it will fold up right. We're going to tie it in. Come back here. And then run our thread back up. This time we're going to go all the way back to the head up here and then just hang your thread to the side. We're going to put this feather right there. Now we're going to start wrapping this white yarn and we're just trying to cover up that color of that thread is all we're really doing with the yarn. Get up here to the front. We're going to tie this off. Cut that. Don't worry about that little bit of white because we're going to cover that up after we tie in this feather. So this feather, we're going to start pulling it like this. <laughs> Try not to cut it with the hook like I almost did. But you see how our feather, the little hairs or whiskers are trying to kind of naturally go backwards. That's what we're looking for. We're going to go up here, not quite to the head, but real dang close. And we're going to have to try to hold that. And this is where it gets a little tricky. If you have any of these hackle pliers, it's a good time to try to use them. Let me make sure I ain't, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. My string is on the other side of the hackle pliers. There we go. Now, I'm cut that rest of that hackle off, kind of clean that up a little bit and then we're going to tie that in and we're going to actually use that colored thread to give us a separation between this black head and the white feathers. I think that little bit of separation helps. You guys that do this for a living, comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are but I just, I like the looks of it. It really looks better. So just kind of pull this stuff back, get a really good thread wrap on that just to give us a nice little, that looks good. All right, we're almost done with this thing. We're going to just finish up with the, finish up with the whip finishing tool, bring this up. We're going to go around one, two, three, four, five times. We're going to do that twice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's a good number. Let's do one more for giggles. Got a little bit of a breeze. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five. Let's pull that out. Look at how good that looks, guys. Tell me that thing ain't gonna catch some fish. Tell you what I'll do guys, comment down below, free lure, I'll send you one of these if you win. We will do the drawing after this video hits 75 views. If you'd like to win this lure, this one right here will be mailed to you. I'll zoom out just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And there it is. If you'd like to win, hashtag free lure in the comments below. For the rest of you, let's go fishing.
Guys, if that's something that you would enjoy doing, we'd love to have you follow us on Instagram. Again, comment down below. Tell us what your favorite bass fishing jig is and or crappie jig. Again, we are making these for crappie fishing, but in this little creek that we're fishing in, there's more often than not, you're gonna end up catching a nice little bass. I've yet to catch a crappie out of here. There are some decent perch, but most of the perch are small and they won't really take a lure this big. We need to build some flies and come down here with our fly rod. As you can see with all the brush, the fly rod, it'd be tough down here catching with a, with a fly rod, but oh my goodness, I think maybe on that other side, man, I don't know. It, it's, it'd just be really tough in here because I ain't wading out in this jump. Not with that stuff, those snakes and stuff I've seen. <laughs> you guys tell me, would you wait out there in that nonsense? <laughs> yeah, not me, brother. I've seen a lot of snakes. There was something over there. I don't know what it was. And it's gone now. Um, I'm not going to say there's alligators down here, but I know I live in alligator country. But whatever it was that was chasing the river rot otters off was not the snake from the earlier video. If you watched that other video, we had a really big snake come by and the river otters came after the snake did and then something splashed over here and just kind of surfaced a little bit. And I don't, it looked like a log to me, but I just can't picture a submerged log all of a sudden just floating to the top. You guys tell me what you think. Would you wade fish in this? <laughs> Uh, there's just absolutely no way I'd get out here and wait in this. That is crazy. I'm not, I'm not lying. No, no, sir. <laughs> and this is way too steep. You can look at the banks. I ain't, there's no way to get a kayak down here. Maybe if you had an inflatable and a couple of buddies that would come help you. But the problem is right now the water's so low because we hadn't had rain since that mini tornado right before Father's Day weekend. And we hadn't had a two inches, we hadn't had an inch and a half of rain, I guarantee you that, since then. And this is September 17th, I think is today. There's something big just jumped over there. Look at the ring over there, guys. Can you see that? That's nice, whatever it is. Oh, fish on, fish on, guys. We got another one. Oh, it's a good one. This is a good one, guys. This is a good one. Oh, man, let's get him up here. Steep bank, steep bank. Oh man, look at how beautiful this thing is. Look at how beautiful this thing is. Sorry about that little man. Look at this fish, guys. Well, he's got a little bit of blood on his tail. Something been trying to get him. All right, guys, here we go. One last shot before we put him back. This thing is an absolute beast. Look at this, guys, he's huge. Let's put him back. Ah, man. All right, that lure hadn't been out of the water very much or very long. I'll, sh I'll show a picture of what the lure looks like when it's not wet. But as you can see, it's starting to dry out, so you got a bunch of whiskers looking things coming off of it. That's, uh, my goodness, guys. We're doing good today. What a great day. Seen otters catching fish on a lure that we made. I just don't know that it could get any better than that. What a beautiful day. I've got a great big old rat's nest in my other rod. That's why I take at least two with me every time I go. I can tear some stuff up, fellas. Not, not nearly as good as my wife. She's a pro at it. I'm just a semi-pro at tearing stuff up but she is terrific at it. Man, he slammed that hard. We're so close to fall, it's knocking on our door. Like I say, this major cold front come in. We've cooled off to 90 degrees and it feels like heaven. Again, guys, let's get outside and make something happen.